Hey guys, welcome to this section, getting acquainted with Mio and Hyper. In this section, we're going to learn about networking with Rust and learn Mio and Hyper. We'll learn these frameworks distinctly, and then we're going to see how they work together. Before we get to those, I'm going to show you what the problems were with I.O. of our previously developed robot army simulation system. Let's move on to the first video of this section, blocking versus non-blocking I.O. of Rust. Here, we're going to know Rust I.O. systems, and then learn the advantages and disadvantages. In here, we're going to take a look at Rust I.O. systems, as well as the difference between them. As you may remember, you'll find that we have used an input-output system in our robot army in the previous volume. That would be a blocking I.O. You might get confused with the word blocking I.O. Not to worry, because I'm going to clear it. See, in our previously developed simulation application, we build a messaging feature, which controls the communication over the console, where the users cannot communicate through the same stream. That's why this I.O. is treated as blocking I.O. To make the communication faster, smoother, and more secure, we have to make the communications in the same stream. Therefore, we're going to integrate our simulation application to the web server. That way, we can make a real-time system, which keeps the users updated with the system. Almost all the IOs of most of the programming languages are blocking ones, as they wait until the sent data is received by the receiver. To resolve this problem, Rust got an asynchronous IO, which works like a non-blocking IO. That's known as Mio. Mio is a very low-level IO. Rust has an asynchronous IO called the rotor. According to the de facto standard, Mio is currently the authentic asynchronous IO of Rust. Blocking and synchronous means the same thing. You call the API, it hangs up the thread until it has some kind of answer and then returns it to you. Non-blocking means that if an answer cannot be returned rapidly, the API returns immediately with an error and does nothing else. So there must be some related way to query whether the API is ready to be called. That is to simulate a wait in an efficient way. To avoid manual polling in a tight loop, asynchronous means that the API always returns immediately, having started a background effort to fulfill your request. So there must be some related way to obtain the result. We're going to learn more about Mio and how it works as an asynchronous I.O. in Rust. Alright guys, in this video, we learned the difference between TMR band Hobie. We learned the difference between blocking and non-blocking I.O.s.